find something you love doing and you'll never work a day in your life. Like that's kind of what practicing the short camera playing golf is for me. Those years of like, you know, between 12 and 18, when I would have started playing golf and going into playing golf seriously, I don't really remember much of them. Like I, I do remember my long game wasn't great, so my short game would have needed to have been good. So that's kind of, that's how I think it was. It was probably only the only part of the game that I really practiced when I was growing up because there was no driving range at the golf course that I played. And there, was, there wasn't a chipping green either, but I used to go out on the course and do it. And that's how I kind of taught myself to, to do it find something you love doing and you'll never work a day in your life like that's kind of what practicing short camera playing golf is for me it's 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 enjoyable and, and still to this day it's it's probably the the part of the game i get the most enjoyment out of practicing we're somewhat short-sighted here i mean the pins on a little bit but like you don't need to do anything to help the ball in the air it's just going to naturally go up oh, i'd look at this and i'd probably play like a mid-height kind of flighted shot in with maybe hopefully a little bit of spin on it and then kind of release down to the hole. That was all right. Pretty happy with that one. I think that's the big thing that amateurs actually get wrong is they, they always go for like the professional shot, trying to hit the, the worldly and you know, fair enough, but we would be conservative. I know I can hold a 10 footer for par. So I'd always like err on the side of caution it's all about choosing the right shot to play. And if you're feeling the heat or if you're under pressure, you probably should be a bit more positive and a bit more aggressive towards the shots you're trying to hit. And um, because it, I find if you get tentative in those situations, you end up hitting bad shots, so yeah. There we go. Oh. Growing up playing amateur golf in Ireland, you play all the championships we play and all the tournaments we play are on links courses and uh, it can help you or it can hinder you. So like you get used to shooting level par, which is not a good thing for professional golf because level par is not very good. But I learned how to grind it out and I learned how to kind of enjoy the tough days and become better at those. Well, I started playing golf in probably 99, 2000. So obviously the Tiger Woods era and when, when he came on the scene and I do remember my childhood my teenage years, just sitting in at the weekend, watching Tiger on TV and going out the following day, trying to replicate the shots that he hit. And then, you know, when I got to know golf a little bit better, obviously what Porrick did in the 2000s, you know, when I was growing up was, was incredible and incredible for Irish golf. So um, they'd be the two players that I would have grown up kind of admiring and idolizing. This bunker shot, even though the lip is kind of high, there's a couple of different options actually with, with the grain, especially we have on the greens here. If you land it short, it will release down to the hole, but you could also land it like, you know, up by the hole and will stop because it's into the grain at the hole. Um, depending on the situation, I would always choose to kind of release it down and try and, you're trying to really hold the shot. So you're trying to like release it down into the hole. I get like quite a wide stance. I lower my hands and I get all my weight on my left side or like 75% of my weight on my left side. And for me, I just feel like I'm trying to keep it there through the shot. I wouldn't open the club face that much here because I've got a bit of green to work with, but I kind of go. Yeah, nearly. That was all right. I'll, I'll never forget this shot I hit because I've tried to hit it every time I go back there and I can't hit it. The 17 hole in St Andrews, the 2010 Open Championship was my first Open to play in. The pin was tucked over the bunker and I hit my second shot short of the road hole bunker on the down slope. And I just went up there and I seen the shot straight away and I hit a flop shot over the bunker at about four feet. And every time I go back for the Dunhill links or every time I go back to the open, I stand there and go, I don't know how I did that. But it was just one of those where, you know, I'm pretty good when I see the shot. As long as I allow myself to go for it, I'm generally pretty good at hitting it. 
People have asked me in the past, do I change my lob wedge bounce wise or do I change anything about it when I get to different types of surface. The only week I'll change the bounce on my lob wedge is the open because it gets so firm when you go play the open in the middle of summer, especially if it's been a dry summer in the UK. I'll spend a bit of time around the chipping greens and around different types of lies and just getting used to the grass and getting used to what the ball does when it hits the green. And the big thing about short game for me is when you have a lie, just reading the lie, I think, is, is the big thing. You know, everybody thinks you hit the same shot for every, you know, every 30 yard pitch is not the same type of shot because you have to read the lie and if the lie is different, it, it changes the type of shot that you need to hit. There are certain courses we go to where like, you might not be able to spin the ball as much out of sand. So you'll have to try and use height to stop the ball and get it coming down soft. So you'll obviously have to play it differently. You know, and if I was going to use height here to try and get it to land soft, I get the club face way open. I get my hands a lot lower. I keep my weight on my left side still and I kind of hit it like that. And I think that's what professional golfers are. Our golfing brain is able to understand what the ball is actually going to do. I went through a year or two where I had a pitch on my edge, uh, 52, a 56 and a 60. But I found that that kind of gave me too much choice and it took away my playability and my feel. Um, so I'm back now with a pitch on my edge of 50 degree and a 58 degree and I just kind of, you know, I just play around with feel and, and just getting, you know, getting used to the different types of shots. There's, there is a certain couple of shots that are more difficult for me, but you know, you only get them once or twice a tournament and if you, if you handle them pretty well, you'll be okay. Here we've got a big down slope where you've probably hit it over the green and you've got like the green running away from you down to the flag. Tricky enough shot, but if you get it right, you actually do have a chance of holding these ones. It's all about like reading the lie and picking what spot you want to land it on, trying to land it there and, and release it down and in. So uh, the one thing that people always try and do off a of down slope, amateurs try and do off a of down slope, is to try and help the ball in the air. And the thing is, if you try and help the ball in the air here, you'll either duff it or thin it. And for me, like I try and feel like all my weight is going with the slope. I'm opening up the face and I'm, I'm literally just trying to land it here somewhere and release it down. So I'm picking a spot. She didn't. Struck that very well. Didn't release as much as I would have thought. This is not very good. Bad lie here. It's all about taking your medicine, trying to leave. Like what you're trying to do here is because you're going downhill to the hole, you're trying to get a pass the hole to leave yourself an uphill putt because you're going to, it's going to be an easier putt. So for me here, a little different to the first time, I'd just be trying to pop it out, land it here and it should release down. You know, actually not too bad, but definitely way different than the first time. There you go. I don't think I ever dreamed of winning the Open or, you know, holding the winning putt in the Ryder Cup or, but even winning on tour, I thought, you know, if I could play on tour and make a living from it, that'd be great. But to be out here and be successful and, you know, have a major under my belt, played in the Ryder Cup, you know, played the Olympics. I, I've done a lot and it, it's pretty cool to have the career I've had so far. And, I really feel like I'm hopefully only getting started and uh, I've got a long way to go, yeah. To watch another DP World Tour video, click here. And to subscribe, click here.